welcome back to Pop Culture Graveyard. I am Hollis. With me, as always, is Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello, Hollis. <laughs> and if you are on YouTube, with me, as always, is Grady. Grady! <laughs> the official mascot of PCG. <laughs> is, is Grady named after the Grady we know and love? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whitman Mayo. It's a name you love. Yeah, my yeah. sister named him uh, Grady Smith is his full name. We are continuing with Shocktober. This is our third Shocktober release, and we are covering the 2010 James Wan directed film, Insidious. Had you seen it before? I had not seen it. I um, had not seen hide nor hair of it. I am not surprised about that. If you've listened to the previous episodes, you know that Dave ain't afraid of no ghosts. He <laughs> does not find a lot of things scary. But given that, did you find moments in this film that kind of fit the bill horror movie wise for you? It's more like I'm watching like an outsider. It's more like I'm saying like, oh, I, I see why people like this. Uh, I, I, I see why this was a popular horror movie. Like, okay. yeah. Um, but I have to say, I, I sat pretty comfortably through the whole thing. It rarely made me even tense. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. That nerves it's a weird deal. It's a weird thing. I kind of each time, each time I watch a scary movie, I'm like, I think I'm going to be, I might be scared this time. I'm like family. Everybody's nice. Little kids, mm -hmm. that nice lady. Um, I'm like, this might be scary. And then it starts happening. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> but how, I can, I can, I can appreciate it. You know, how much of that do you think is because you know you're not into horror films and because you know you don't believe in the paranormal stuff, you just simply never buy in at the beginning. Almost to a fault, almost like maybe defensively. Mm. Um, like I try so hard to buy into so many sci-fi things and other things. I'm like, oh, I just want to be immersed in this. I just want to believe it. Right. And I go in all like giddy to get into it and enjoy it. And I have to admit, I go into these like, here we go. Wow. Let's see if you can scare me or, you know, see, and, and it's a that, problem. That's so bizarre to me because you routinely buy in to sci-fi fantasy stuff. You kind of- Not a lot of fantasy, but sci-fi. Well, not a lot of fantasy sure. perhaps, but-, but, but Sci-fi is largely fantasy because- Nobody does hard sci-fi, and they're yeah. just basically doing fantasy. Right, but you suspend yeah. disbelief for sci-fi in a way that you refuse to do for horror, it seems. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure if it's, like I said, I'm not sure if it's defensive mm -hmm. or um, if... I, I, it might be, like, sci-fi feels like suspension of disbelief for the sake of awe. And... um I'm having trouble doing suspension of disbelief for the sake of fear, for the sake of tension, for the sake. It's not a good investment. Well, how about this? Do you do better with homicidal killer horror movies, like a guy with an axe, something that could and does exist in real life, serial mm -hmm. killer mean, stuff, yeah. more than demons and, you know, spirits and ghosts? But then I'm out because I don't like the cruelty. <laughs> then I'm out because I'm right. like, I'm like, you know, there's 150 of these for real every year. We yeah. need to make up a couple of extra ones, right. fiction oh, ones. God, <laughs> you know, um, uh, uh, yeah, it's tough. You know, it, I think I may have also missed the window to learn how to enjoy scary movies. I think um, that's you know, definitely I'm a close thing. to 60 now. And mm -hmm. I think I never learned how to enjoy a scary movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, you definitely do not put the shock in Shocktober. So I'm going to do a lot of heavy lifting here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please do. Uh, this is directed by James Wan. He made his name in the Saw franchise. You know that one? I do. It's the one with the... I saw a, there was a Saw guy on the on the chalkboard 
in in the guy's classroom. Oh, a little, little, little drawing of a guy with spirals on his cheeks, and I was like, great. little in joke. I was like the saw guy, but I hadn't made the connection between mm -hmm. Juan. So that's cool. Good. Yeah, that. that is cool. I love that kind of stuff. The saw movies are something I never even saw because that's where I go out. I'm not into the whole kind of like right. torture porn. I'm not yeah. into that at all. I like a ghost story. But anyway, it's so funny to me, as I guess this is an aside, but it's really the, one of the stars of the movie. It's so weird to me how Patrick Wilson has become the go-to horror guy, and he's connected to several horror franchises. He's got Insidious, he's got The Conjuring, and he's got Annabelle. And he he did that in the Tall Grass movie. He's like, you know, he's Mr. Horror. I kind of think it might be because he looks like a basic, boring white man, but he's got a little sugar in his game, you know? Uh -huh, There's something uh -huh. you like about this guy. Yeah, this guy is like a white bread guy, and you're right. He's like believable, milk toast husband. Mm. Yeah, he's Mr. Milk Toast. I had um, no idea he's in a bunch of stuff, but it yeah. makes sense that he is, yeah. It's so funny because when he started, he was like a, a New York actor. He was in all these Broadway musicals. You know, he's in like Oklahoma. He's in like these, you know, he was a song and dance man kind of on the stage. And you cut, you jump cut 15, 20 years later and he's Mr. Horror. So it's a weird thing to be doing. Like uh, there, he does, he, I mean, the move, he does 90% or 75% of this movie is nodding and quizzical looking. Yeah. Like you're basically <laughs> listening to your wife and you're listening to the experts and you're, mm -hmm. so uh, but then he gets a little hero time. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's good. He is good. And Rose they, Byrne they were is good. They a believable family. Yeah, they were believable as a couple. And, you know, at first you're like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Why doesn't he support his wife? Why is he always making up shit to do at work so he won't be yeah, there? Yeah, he's kind of like, he is actually a little shitty. He's a little yeah, gaslighting. for sure. But yeah. then you realize that there's layers that he's playing underneath that sometimes gaslighting isn't done maliciously and isn't done intentionally sometimes like he's afraid to say i'm terrified of of this and i'm not sure why dave i was gonna say he's gaslighting himself and she gets collateral damage on it she's she's a victim of his self gaslighting yeah and, but she definitely gets gaslit because he wants to play down everything that's happening and he wants to avoid everything that's happening. And she's incredibly right to ask him, why are you avoiding this? And his answer is, I'm not avoiding it, which is gaslighting. Yeah. Because um, he is avoiding it. Yeah. I've seen a lot of these movies. And the next time that a kid says, mom, I don't like my room. You should ask if it's because some cloven hoof demon is in there. Like, <laughs> you know, most of the time it's the quote unquote crazy woman who is like, honey, I heard something. It's like, you're in here shit. Like the there's a whole paranormal activity franchise that's based on honey, go to bed. You right. know? Yeah. So like, but <laughs> this is this is part for the course you never believe the kid it's just, well it's a new house the kid sure there's a monster in the closet sure there's a demon on the ceiling but listen to your fucking kid you know yeah yeah but i mean if you've got matching mom and son pajamas you're kind of asking for it i noticed you, that yeah you get what you get fuck those kids um <laughs> and who That's names cute. their kids foster and dalton what kind of Gen Z bullshit is that? <laughs> oh. It's funny because those names are <clears throat> like they're such an obvious they're such an obvious attempt to not name your kids regular names. But yeah. then everyone does it. And then the next thing you know, there's Dalton one and two and three in the same class. <laughs> yeah. That that's it's so stupid because when I was a kid, there were like 40 guys in Major League Baseball named Bob. Right. And right. now there's like 40 guys named Bryce. <laughs> and you can't find names like Fred. Yeah. I remember the first time a guy, I, I met a young man and, and I said, well, what's your name? And he said his name. And I was like, what? That's a name? <laughs> I, I forget. It was like some kind of tree or something. It was oh, like God. Aspen or. Wow. But it was something that now you'd be like, oh, no, that's a common name. Hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a name. 
And then it started coming out fast and furious. And I was like, oh, right. Yeah. Because my friends, you know, were Jimmy, Tom, Ron. Mm -hmm. Those are actual friends. Eric. Yeah. Uh, so on and so forth. Dave. Mm -hmm. Hollis. <laughs> so first, you know, there's the normal kind of, I didn't put those books there, kind of things that are happening early on. But the first I think the first thing that was said that leads you to believe there's a history is the wife says to Patrick Wilson, I just want things to be different in this house. Mm. And I was like, mm -hmm. say what now? You know, that's when yeah. I was like, what crap went down in the last house? I was like, this has, this has, uh, <clears throat> this smacks of the shining. I promise, honey, never again, never yeah. again. Yeah. 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 Uh, My first hint, was uh how come there's no pictures of daddy yeah i was like that's a thing i was like that's yep. a thing kid wouldn't have said that that's mm -hmm. a thing that's another thing i'm watching too carefully i'm not like leaned back and relaxed i'm like looking at it like <laughs> making sure no one sneaks up on me yeah um so yeah so i caught that how come there's no pictures of daddy yeah it's another one uh so if you, you have a jet yeah, I was just gonna say, you want to hey, give a general, yeah, you want to give a general say, overlook. The over the overlook hotel. Uh, basically, if you haven't seen the movie, this kid Dalton, who is the eldest child, he's about eight. I don't know, I'm bad with ages. You know, there's a couple of scares with him, but nothing out of the ordinary. And then all of a sudden, he doesn't wake up one day. He goes into a coma, and the doctors don't know what's wrong with him. They jump cut three months later another shining like thing oh yeah and he's at home in a hospital bed still in a coma and they're caring for him at home and there's a couple of great things that happen i love all of the action with the baby monitor mm. where the mother hears kind of weird that things was scary cause, yeah because they also have a baby upstairs but yeah. here's the thing why doesn't she just run up there? At least listen while you're walking briskly upstairs. She's just like, what's going on? And some demon is whispering, I'm like, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. And give me it. Yeah. Give me it. <laughs> <laughs> what the stuff. fuck? Mother of the year, just taking mm -hmm. a stroll. Like, get up there. You know who would have been bounding up those steps? Oh, Mrs. Torrance. Wendy, Mrs. Torrance. Mother Hell, of yeah. the year. She is yeah. awesome. One of your best promos, by the way. Oh, thank you. I really I'm, I'm, oh, so I you give really her laid gift. it on thick <laughs> and it was amazing. So good. So it may good. be my new favorite, actually. That one. It's my favorite. It's yeah. My favorite. Oh, good. Uh little Foster, the youngest brother, is like scared of Dalton, who is in a coma. And he goes, Can I change rooms? Because I don't like it when he walks around at night. And the mother's like, what? Yeah. That's some creepy but shit. That's, but that's all she is, uh, which, which is very common in movies yeah. of all different stripes. People say things that need further questioning and don't get it. Yes. What do you mean walks around? You hear him walking around? <laughs> do you see him walking around? You know, like, yeah. uh, do you wake up and remember him have walked around or do you... Yeah, Does he yeah say I, anything? Does I he find fault anything? with that too, because that's a director just kind of moving the chess pieces in front of you. And I'm like, whoa, dude, just deal with this. You know, yeah. don't, don't just drop it. If you want it drop, then like write it on a chalkboard. Don't let the scene not ring true because there would be natural follow ups. And I'm sure there were, but we weren't privy to it as an audience. So it's bullshit. But it's not just horror that does it. All the so many of the movies do it. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, true. And I off I used to find myself saying a lot. Uh, this is not how people have conversations. Um, this is not how conversations work. Yeah, mommy, I don't like it when my brother who's in a coma and hasn't moved in three months <laughs> walks around the room. Huh? Uh, huh? Okay, sweetie, we'll we'll give you a different room. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. yeah. Um, yeah. And the walking around? Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> worry about it. Why don't we put a pin in it? <laughs> and we'll revisit when you're screaming. Um, so uh, 
There was a couple of uses of a song that I think rates among one of the creepiest songs ever for an innocuous, happy song, and that is Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Uh, yeah, I have a tu- I have a tiptoe through the tulip story. Love it. If I, not now, I, when? I believe the gentleman's name is Tiny Tim. It is. It is, and it was. Rest in peace, yeah. Tiny Tim. Rest in peace. I happen to know that Tiny Tim had an evening of joy, not far before, like a little bit before he passed away. He was doing small venues, and he did a small venue in a town near me. And um, me and like four or five friends were out. We were already out. And I was like, oh, you know what? Because it was like we hadn't really found anything great. That's what we used to do. We used to drive around from place to place. Hmm. Ah, This place isn't doing it for me. Let's try another place. Ah, This place isn't doing it for me. Or there's not enough girls here. Um, (laughs) Things like that. So we wind up at this small place, either in Pleasantville or Hawthorne. And uh, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that Tiny Tim is doing a night here. And we go, and Tiny Tim is there, and it's just a bar that holds like maybe 80 people. And uh, he's uh, just, it looks like an open mic night at a place that started doing open mic nights like two weeks ago. Like, wow. you know, it's like, it's not, it's unfair to Tiny Tim. It really is. And he has a ukulele and he's doing songs and he did tiptoe through the tulips. And I said to the three or four guys I was with, I said, he's going to hang around afterwards. And I want you guys to spread it out. But each one of you, I expect you to ask him for his autograph. Oh, that's sweet. So we did that. And um, we ended up sort of huddled around him, talking to him. And we were asking him what talk shows he had been on. And he's like, oh, I first did Carson and in da da da. And he was telling us some stories. And he was like, I'm really surprised that you guys are. He was like this frail little guy, or yeah. weirdly shaped, actually. Not yeah, little, yeah. Sort he's of, oblong. Sort of, <laughs> yeah, sort of Humpty Dumpty ish. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, he was like, I'm really surprised that, that you, that you, know who he is are that you know who i am and and that you like this Um, and um and i said you'd be surprised there's a bit of a resurgence of of what you were doing uh, oh dave i was like it's not just Mm. us there's a lot of young people who find your stuff joyful um yeah that is the sweetest most generous thing you guys could have done for somebody i felt and i'm sure about it i'm sure it meant a lot to him but I swear to God, when you said he had an evening or a night of joy near me, I was like, how does Dave know that Tiny Tim went to a brothel in his neighborhood? <laughs> so that's a much better place you took it. That's where I drew the lion house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was only metaphorically. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And, and, and uh, to watch, you know, I got to watch Tiny Tim. Play tiptoe through live. the tulips on a ukulele live. Uh, yeah, it was lovely, amazing. wow, and bizarre. I'll say this though: you're not going to find a creepier version of tiptoe through the tulips than Tiny Tim's, and I'm glad they used it. Mm-hmm. However, it would have been more on point for the movie if it was an older version. If it was added, because they even added some crackle as if it was a 78 playing. And I'm like, (laughs) Tiny Tim was the resurgence on those songs. Yeah. You know, someone else did them first. Yeah. He was the Tom Waits of. Yeah. Yeah. He was pretending to be that. The same guy I was Mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. About the shining. The guy who says he likes to set the world on fire. Exactly. Yeah, the song works really well. And the other songs, the sort of the sort of cacophonous, scratchy mm-hmm. violin songs are pretty great right. too. Yeah. Yeah, that's good sound Scary design stuff. that they use. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've said it before, it's the sound design that usually gets me on horror films more than even the visuals. I turn the sound off and all of a sudden I'm the bravest man in the world. But like <laughs> yeah. things things like, you know, banging on the door, then you know, and then voices over here and then the the scratchy violins i buy in i buy into mm-hmm. that and i I'm before jealous. i know it i'm scared yeah you should be uh yeah it's so fun. what did you think 
you know, because they created a mythology here. And I'm sure maybe someone else did it before. They speak about astral projection in this. Mm -hmm. And the, I guess you'd have to call her a medium in this, Lynn Shea as Elise Rainier. I thought she was amazing. She was she amazing. Was so I believable. Only, I only know her from comedy, from the Farrelly Brothers stuff, where she did a uh, lot no, of over I, the top. I, I didn't over, recognize her. Oh, over the top characters. Yeah. But they created something called The Further, which is, you know, when you astral project, you leave your body, you go, you're free to travel around. I've, the, the idea being I'm, that the spirits who are dead see your body as a vessel, an empty vessel that they want to jump into, mm -hmm. which is kind of a nice idea. Yeah, it's kind of two mythology. It's not two mythologies. It's like a two portions of a mythology that that intersect because one portion is people die and not everyone goes to heaven or hell there is a sort of middle ground mm -hmm. that you couldn't be lost in or stuck in and it's this further um and the other part is that some human beings can leave their bodies and travel around and they share the further with these dead people right uh, so those two things intersect and that's what's happening in this movies in this movie it reminded me of where carol ann was uh or where we assume carol ann was in poltergeist in in poltergeist yeah and um that little woman with the squeaky voice would be our right. uh elise I forget. zelda elise. zelda <laughs> that's pretty obvious <laughs> Yeah, so like if Craig T. Nelson strangled Zelda at the end of the movie. <laughs> that was great. I Here's what I don't get. Let's just jump to the ending. I, yeah, sure. That's all on the director. The director screwed up mightily because all he had to do is have the woman's being choked. She can't make noise. Have Patrick Wilson's character, Josh, not screaming at the top of his lungs. Have him whispering like, mm -hmm. die, die. Because then it's believable. But instead, I'm like, how big is this house all of a sudden? It's a craftsman. They're feeding their kid in the next room. <laughs> they, yeah, your husband's killing someone. Go get your man. He got yeah. lost in my medium. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. And he, she, she's like, and she doesn't even say like, oh, my God, and get up. And go. she goes, excuse me for a sec. Yeah, it's something. I yeah. heard a harumph. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't get a harumph from that I guy. didn't get a harumph out of it. Uh, you know, the further, it's funny because, like, you know, I always love when we get a title from dialogue. And at one point she goes about the spirits. They have a mm -hmm. more insidious agenda. And I'm like, boom, mm -hmm. we got a title. Yeah. But um, what what cracked me up is she's there and she's about to kind of do her thing, which is put on like a World War One gas mask and speak through yeah. the elephant tusk of a connective device to her assistant's headphones, and she says the words, it's a little unorthodox. And I'm like, oh, more than the demon or astral projection <laughs> or the further itself? Like, I know. Yeah, a little unorthodox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she's got her spiel, mm -hmm. and she's probably much more used to giving the spiel to people who have only really experienced like some rattling pots and pants. <laughs> right, the house settling. <laughs> They're not, yeah, there's not always this having seen all of these th 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 that was yeah. kind of nice about it that it there were several people who saw this scary stuff and and you didn't have to really wonder whether one person was imagining it you didn't have to yeah wonder if anyone would believe her you're like okay there's two people oh now there's three people you're like we have a, a quorum. A quorum, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a quorum yeah. on the haunting. Yeah, we had we a quorum can... before she busted out her disco bondage headgear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That um, was a nice looking setup, though, and it was, it was it creative. Was new. It was, yeah, yeah, I like yeah, that. It was a new. new it was new. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of the spirits, I love that Billy Bear looking motherfucker. You know that tall guy with the duster oh, jacket. Billy Bear looking <laughs> mother. I, you know, I was wondering what I should pin on that guy, but that's pretty good. I was gonna say it was that guy who was murdering people with the uh, cattle, cattle killer, the, cattle uh, the um, compressed air. Oh, oh from, yeah, uh, no country for old men. No country. I was gonna say maybe him or. Mm. 
<laughs> That's what it was. Uh, I know my audience. I know you. Did yeah, it's Billy pretty good. Bear. That's pretty good, Billy Bear. I like. They wore the same jacket. Is that what it was? It was like they were about the same. What was size. that? It was the jet black hair slicked back. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, the yeah. kind of like countenance of him, mm-hmm. and he had like a strong jawline. It was very Sunny Landon. Like we talked before about, um, you know, the new things. I like the pictures of Josh as a kid where the quote unquote old lady is getting closer and closer to him. Mm. That was super creepy. It was super creepy in a kind of like National Geographic documentary way. Like, mm-hmm, you know, when they mm-hmm. show you actual spectral photographs, I was like, yeah, that's cool. I was like, where was this taken? It had that kind of 70s sheen to it, the Kodachrome. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's always a nice thing about, especially for us. I mean, I can see, like, I can picture in my head all the different types of photos in the photo box. There's what there's usually some thick ones that you're like, oh, what kind of camera is this from? Yeah. Like, they don't even flex. Right. And then there's ones, do you ever see ones with the scalloped edge? Love those. They're cut. Love yeah. those. Right? And it's just the square with the white border and at the bottom, like April 1965 or something that always has. Yeah. And then they started doing that sort of like um, digital uh, bronze colored ethereal yeah. numbers yeah. in the corner with the date. Oh. My friend, my friend, Tom, uh, rest in peace. He used to always develop all of his photos with a white border. It was way more expensive. Everyone would be like, "Oh my god, I love this white border." It's like, That's yeah, pay it really it. makes the difference. It yeah. really makes the difference. Yeah, you know, uh, it's funny because I thought of something you said in The Shining, with regard to um, the kind of skeletons and the spook house look. Once mm. Josh gets into the further, he simply takes us, the audience, on a trip through a fun house. And it's like a half-assed sleep no more. It's like, if you don't like the skeletons at the Overlook Hotel, (laughs) what do you make of the spook house day players walking around? Because I like the white bread 50s family where the daughter shotgunned her family and, you know, the crying Mm. mother. And there were a couple of like pretty cool tableaus. But they were... Yeah, but they were like cliche, right? It was a guy reading the paper, a mm. woman with a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, and 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 then you come back and they've all been shot in the chest with a shotgun. That see not, that that little murderess, the the woman who sh- the mm-hmm. ghostly woman who shot them, she brought in a new thing which was the sudden smile. Yeah. Which I think some filmmakers saw that and you immediately got a movie about because there's a movie out i believe the second one is out now called like the smile or smile just smile yeah Yeah. and it's the entire thing is it's scary because they're like spooky looking and then they smile a big smile um i liked I, i was like ooh, that's a that's a nice i've never and like i could see someone explaining it and going and then she smiles and it's like, <laughs> smiles smiles yeah. yeah smiles trust me it'll be scary that's the movie um, that's yeah the movie. <laughs> yeah but uh yeah that whole it was like walking around in the fog i was like it's 20 i don't know when this movie was made 2011 2010 2010 i'm like it's 2010 <laughs> more fog is not the answer to scary <laughs> uh, well speaking of which uh, um the whole, as far as I'm concerned, the coolest thing in the movie, and the whole movie should have been focused on and featuring that cloven hoofed motherfucker, the lipstick face demon. Red face, yeah, yeah. Loved him. Him sharpening his claws with sparks flying like he's in a 1980s heavy metal video. I Joseph love that. Bashara. Joseph Bashara. <clears throat> but like that is just so cool. That's tough, right? When you you're like, okay, then the demon comes out. What does he look like? It's like, oh, this is make or break the movie right now. Like, yeah. You know, and uh, they did a good job. I think and so. It, it helps. It helps that there was a bunch of foreshadowing sketches and crayon drawings. that sort of gets your mind going on like, okay, red face. Yeah. Uh, dark hole eyes. And then when you get it, you're like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Also, it was a good plot point where Patrick Wilson 
who's forgotten his own past and doesn't buy into his son's problems, suddenly is in his son's room and he sees the paintings on the wall that his sons did, the cartoon drawings in crayon. Crayons, yeah. And he sees that he astral projects. I left my body again last night. And then he sees mm-hmm. the demon and it's like, okay, let's <laughs> right. do it. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. As horror movies go, Dave, where would you put this? On a on uh, a on a scale of one to shining. Mm-hmm. I would watch this before I would watch um, Halloween again, or weirdly, uh, Halloween Friday the Thirteenth. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it was it was as much as as it was scary. It wasn't there wasn't a lot of terrorizing. Uh, there wasn't a lot of stabbing, yeah, and bleeding and dismembering. So for me, it was like uh, it was a little more thoughtful, uh, right. Yeah, it had a little more mythology, like you were saying. Um, yeah, and it's essentially a mother and father caring for their kid. It's it's. Uh, I was going to make a fuck it. I'll make an obscure reference. It was Lorenzo's oil. If the kid <laughs> was possessed instead of sick, it's like it's just a drama. It's a family drama. Yeah, it, it is. To it's, be... a, it's a drama with a particularly weird um, the reason for all the drama. And speaking of particularly weird, bringing in the two ghost hunters. I was going to say Specs and Tucker. Yeah. They were fun. They need a spinoff. They, they were super fun to the point where you're like, these guys are too fun for this movie. Yeah. Like, but then they start to sort of blend into the movie as they get a couple of more dramatic moments after they mostly had funny moments. Yeah. And you, you start to really appreciate their, they're like a little valve. Yeah, they're like a little comedy valve, let off some steam, let off some tension. It's a great back and forth between them. Uh, really enjoyed them. Really, and I was super worried that one of them was going to die. Yeah, you see, almost you figured, worse. Now they, they've lost their, their boss. Yeah, you figured that they were there just to add to a body count to give you... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Very they weird to to spare everyone throughout and then at the end do what they did. Yeah, but that's a good twist. And anyway, there's yeah. like I think there's like it was three, very unexpected. Yeah, there's three further insidious movies. And with a couple of them, I believe they went prequel just so they could give Lin Shay oh, more, good. That's more nice time to, to do with that character, yeah. at least. Lay Wanell and Angus Sampson, who's the big guy, are Specs and Tucker. And I'll tell you something, Dave. If Kevin Smith directed this movie, those two would have been the leads. <laughs> yeah, they you would know? have been. He would have Jay yeah. and Silent Bob their way right through this fucking film. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But I would watch a movie with just, just the two of them. They were great. Oh, yeah. I don't even think there's going to be. It's probably just a, from the creators of Saw. But let me um, see if there's taglines. <laughs> Here's. A, I'm just going to go through them. They're almost Mel Brooks like, what's in that picture? <laughs> uh, another one is just a, a bit of dialogue. We need to save Dalton, dot, 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 now. Wow. Stupid. Here's one. <laughs> yes. The further you travel, the darker it gets. I like that one. That says it. Yeah, that says um, it. And as I suspected, Another one is just from the makers of Paranormal Activity and Saw. There it is. Yeah. And then the last one, which I kind of like, it's not the house that's haunted. Oh, that's kind of good, too. And it's yeah. like a picture of the kid. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I like that. All right. A picture is worth a thousand screams. Mm. Um, maybe. Uh, speaking of the pictures. Yeah. An interesting thing about ghosts is that they change throughout the decades. Um, people's idea of a ghost, it, it kind of very much points to the fact that there are none. Um, because for hundreds of years, ghosts were not see-through and wispy. Mm. Ghosts would clomp around and you could see them perfectly fine. Ghosts started becoming see-through and wispy soon after the invention of the camera. When photographers realized that when they were 
taking a picture, which took like seven minutes or even longer in some cases, if one of the people suddenly maybe passed out or had to go to the bathroom or who knows, back then died of diphtheria, <laughs> um, anyone who did not remain for the full time was only on film a little. And the photographers realized, oh, I can do fake ghost photos. And they would have someone step in and stand next to a person and say, okay, now step out. And they would make these photos with these see-through people mm -hmm. and say they were ghost photos. Some people did it saying, like being perfectly honest about what they were doing. And some people tried to pass them off as photos of ghosts. And it was back then you could get away with it because people barely knew what photos were. And the spiritual movement was never bigger than in Victorian times. There you um, go. Yeah. So, but that's when ghosts become wispy. And then you talk to people and they say, I saw a wispy figure. I had a dream about a wispy figure. I could, the, the, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you're on board with the new ghost. Like ghosts are now that. That's what people see when they see a ghost. That's like, yeah, you're seeing the modern ghost because you're on board with the new idea right. of what a ghost is. I bought this book, The Ghost, A Cultural History by Susan Owens. Um, mm. Because I was thinking about that fact. And uh, I haven't read it yet, but it, it speaks to that and other things. Uh, the Cultural History of Ghosts. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, science. Science. It's a buzzkill. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> That's what I appreciate about Bigfoot. The best footage of Bigfoot is still the 1960s Patterson Gimlin film. That has not been improved. I almost upon. said Zapruder film. Yeah, Z yeah. <laughs> Shame what that Sasquatch Bigfoot did to that president. Cr crossing the grassy knoll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I I can picture every square inch of that Bigfoot footage. I love that Bigfoot footage, oh, and they've tremendous. since stabilized it. Awesome. Which is yep. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Really nice. Um, All right, Dave. While we're on it, yeah, you've seen that footage. I've seen that footage. Do you see a zipper anywhere? Do you see anything about that quote unquote costume <laughs> that matches anything that costume makers, both amateur and professional, could do at that time? Yeah, it's a very impressive costume. I, that is that is what is impressive about that footage how do you explain the costume though how do you explain the genius of that costume how do you explain the pyramids people are very good at what they do <laughs> and we don't always have an answer to how you're, they did you're it. equating the greatest minds of the ancient world both yes. architecturally and scientifically and mathematically to mm -hmm. a couple of dudes in a pickup with some horse hair and some glue yes back yes. in the 60s you are okay some i've a couple of guys there was a third guy and the third guy said hey if we're gonna do this let's do it right <laughs> <laughs> i just love a good debate on on patty i just um, and, and also if there are bigfoots they don't look over their shoulder that's just mm. such a human thing to do hey what was that was that is that a camera? <laughs> it better not be a camera. Because he looks over his shoulder, uh, doesn't he? She does, yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I figured this would be a good thing to get you going. But yeah, that is... Uh, I'm going to go just, with they do. They, they do. look over their shoulders, nice. don't they? Yeah, they yeah. them. All right. Well, <laughs> on that note, we go from the All science right. of Bigfoot and um Ghosts the hell did you bring up <laughs> how did this happen where did this go off the rails uh, zelda i'm blaming zelda so send us your bigfoot theories hope you enjoyed your, it uh, yeah um thanks dave we just got one more to get through and i'm telling you right now it's a fun rollicking ride not all that dissimilar from the good time that dark shadows was so hopefully you enjoy it fun and rollicking those are words i can i can get with Keep it breezy. Keep it breezy. All right, my friend. Good work. Hollis and Dave would like to thank you for enjoying Pop Culture Graveyard.